We can describe most materials by the properties that they exhibit. Fluids take the shape of the container they're poured into under gravity. Solid materials, on the other hand, tend to hold their shape, even under pressure. If it's soft enough, a solid can deform, but will eventually return to its original shape. Did you see it? The ball's shape changes as it bounces off the table, but eventually it returns to its original shape. This property is known as elasticity. One way we can model the elastic property of solids is by using a spring. See how the spring stretches a fixed amount after a weight is added? This is caused by the weight, which exerts a downward force on the spring equal to the mass of the weight multiplied by gravity. After additional weights are added, the spring stretches again by the same amount each time. Knowing both the force applied to the spring and the resulting change in the spring's length, we can calculate the spring stiffness using Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law states that the force on the spring is equal to the stiffness of the spring times the change in the spring's length caused by the added weight. There's very little change in a spring's stiffness, if at all, which is why the elastic spring returns to its original position when the weights are removed. Both liquids and gases can have fluid-like properties. Like we showed earlier, liquids tend to take the shape of their container, but so do gases. And, just like liquids, they can even be poured out of their container too. Unlike solids, fluids respond to forces by continuously moving. We can use a dash pot to model this property. Over time, an applied downward force, again equal to the mass of the weight multiplied by gravity, will cause a change in the length of the dash pot. This force equals the viscosity of the fluid in the dash pot multiplied by the rate of change in the dash pot's length, or its velocity. See what happens when we add the same weights as before to this dash pot? The dash pot continues to deform until the weights are removed. And, unlike the spring, the dash pot does not return to its original shape. Many everyday things we use have both fluid and solid-like properties, such as ketchup and toothpaste. Some of these materials are called viscoelastic. You've probably played with silly putty before, but did you know that it's also a viscoelastic material? It acts like a solid if you bounce it quickly, but you can see how it flows like a liquid over a long period of time. But why are these materials so important? Aside from using them in food, packaging, and manufacturing, we can also use viscoelastic models to describe the cells and tissues that make up our bodies. We can tell that cells are viscoelastic by pulling on them, using a device called a magnetic micromanipulator. Let's start by pulling on a magnetic bead attached to the solid surface. We can see that the response is very similar to that of the spring. The bead moves by a fixed amount when the magnet is turned on. In contrast, when the bead is attached to a cell, the response is much more complex. The bead continues to move towards the magnet when it is turned on, similar to the dash pot, but relaxes when the magnet is turned off, like the spring. Now let's look at a bead attached to the surface of an actual cell. When we turn the magnet on, the response is similar to that of the dash pot. The bead continues to slowly move towards the magnet, but we know that the cell also has elastic properties because when the magnet is turned off, the bead returns to its original position. Viscoelasticity can be modeled by a combination of both the spring and the dash pot in parallel. By adjusting the spring and dash pot properties to match the deformation of a material, we can decompose a single response to see how much of a material is a solid and how much of it is a fluid. We can model changes in cell stiffness or even identify cell types by their viscoelastic properties.